We're on. Okay, I'd like to call to order the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of March 9th, 2021, 7 p.m. This is a web-based meeting. Uh, first on our agenda is a public hearing continued. The Victoria Heron, Tracy Costelli, Site Plan 8-30G, additional five units, total of 11 units, 28 South Street. So Stephen, are you going to take over for this? Oh, yeah, I guess I, I will oh, Neil's start. here. I'm Neil's here, there. but no, uh, Neil. again, for the record, Neil Marcus Codewolf, on behalf of the applicant, joined this evening by Steve Trinkus, uh, and I think that the microphone is all Steve's because he's responded, I, I believe, to all the outstanding issues. So, mm -hmm. why don't you review where we are, Steve? Yeah, thank you, uh, Steve Trinkus. For the record, I'm a professional engineer in Southbury, Connecticut. Um, David or Beth, can I have screen share? Screen sharing is enabled, Mr. Trinkus. Thank you, David. Uh, You're welcome. Okay, um, these are revised plans, which I sent to Beth um, today. We only got health department comments as they were dated yesterday and uh, Beth forwarded them as soon as she had them. Um, so I couldn't complete a, a response until uh, today. Um, so I do apologize for getting them in, you know, later, but, um, you know, I didn't want to just respond to Wright Pierce and then have another memo for, um, you know, the health department. Uh, a couple minor changes were, were made to the site plan in response to Wright Pierce. Uh, one was, uh, and this was inadvertent on my, when I moved the water line the last time, it happened to go through this 44 inch oak tree, which was not my intent. So I just shifted the line uh, to the east, it will come in parallel to the concrete walkway, make a 90 degree turn to the west and another 90 degree turn back uh, to the south. And therefore uh, we're not near the oak tree and they'll remain with no impact uh, to it. Um, right Pierce was concerned in widening the driveway. Uh, the, the curb will be right adjacent to the um, side of the house at this point. Um, so we put in two concrete bollards that will be just uh, at the curb line uh, before and then after uh, the deck as a barrier. But it's important to note that uh, I took an average pickup truck. It's six and a half feet in width. We have a 20 foot wide driveway. So even with two trucks and give them a little bit extra two eight foot wide, you've got 16. There's still four additional feet in the driveway. So it's a straight driveway. It's not a curve. Um, and you know, it's not a safety issue. Um, Wright Pierce had a comment on the dumpster pad. Um, so we just changed uh, the grading a little bit, which I'll show you in a second, but I put a very low retaining wall here, a foot and a half high. So the dumpster pad will have a 4% pitch from the south to the north. So the runoff will drain off the dumpster pad, but it won't be, you know, uh, uh, very steep. Uh, so if I can just, and then let me just go to the grading plan. Um, so, you know, that's where the retaining wall is shown and we have the revised contours here. Um, it right Pierce's request just to make it clear that we're pitching from the back of the building towards the swale. We put in a series of spot elevations will all be the same. So we will pitch out um, to the base of the 446 contour and the water will follow the arrows um, to the yard drain here. I also created a, a high point on the southeast corner of the building so that uh, from basically the setback line that I have here going forward, that's the only little drainage area that will drain across what will be lawn area. And then it will go across the end of the sidewalk to the driveway and then ultimately out to the catch basin. Um, you know, it's not unusual, you know, to have water running across a, a sidewalk. Um, and you know it happens on the, the roads every day um, out in front of the site, but the area is very small. It's draining there, and again, it'll all be vegetated. If it was all pavement, there'd be uh, potentially a greater concern. Um, while we're on the dumpster pad, as I spoke with Beth after the last hearing, and I believe I said at the hearing, I widened the pad. Uh, I lengthened the pad, I should say, to 12 foot. Um, we're going to provide screening between the dumpster pad and the adjacent property to the east because they have a deck at the rear of their barn and they're concerned about seeing the building. So we put in some arborvitaes here. If I make the dumpster pad 10 by 12, I have roughly six inches of space to plant a tree. 
And two things are gonna happen. One, you can't dig a hole in that area for the tree, but it also will not survive um, in that area. Um, there is no requirement in the Bethel regulations. The health department has talked to, I guess, dumpster guys or garbage guys, but a dumpster pad is a function of the number of units. And you'll have one dumpster, you'll have one recycling bin. The eight by 12 pad is more than adequate for that use. And that's what we will build um, on this site. Uh, Wright Pierce had asked for a detail of the yard drains that we have here. That's been added to the detail plan. Um, and they also had a question, uh, they were concerned about the grading. The, the rim elevation of this yard drain is 443 and a half, which is half a foot lower than this 44 contour. And it's lower than the spot elevation here. And the reason I did this was to create a defined low point so the water clearly knows where to go to go into this drain and then be conveyed um, to the level spreader um, that's uh, part of the bioretention system. Um, uh, Ray Pierce had a, a comment regarding uh, the level spreader um, that we should prove that we're going to, you know, the 25 year storm will be attenuated. However, the 25-year storm event is the Bethel requirement for peak rate attenuation. It is not a design storm. And when you're designing low impact <clears> development <throat> practices, which both an infiltration trench, which the level spreader basically is, and or the bioretention system, these are designed for the water quality storm, which is one inch of rainfall. Because the watershed uh, for the uh, yard drain is mostly offsite and part of Overlook Park, it's all wooded. Um, you know, varying degrees of vegetation on the ground, mostly not much of an understory, but you have a forest litter layer. Um, for the water quality storm, there's actually no runoff uh, calculated. It's 0.0, .0 cubic feet per second. Even if we go up to the two-year storm, which is roughly 3.6 inches of rain in 24 hours, the peak rate uh, going to the level spreader is 0.3 CFS. Now, it's important on this point to understand that the TR-55 model, which all of us use as engineers, when it came out, you only did runoff numbers to the nearest whole number. You never had any values to the right of the decimal point. But all of these programs that have come out, you can put in six places right of the decimal point if you choose. It doesn't mean the accuracy is out to that degree the TR-55 model is basically a whole number model and that's it. So if you're less than one, you're effectively zero or the typical rounding comes into play. If you're 0.5 and under, it goes to zero. If you're 0.6 and up, it will go to one CFS. But again, we have sand out here, deep well-drained sands. Um, we did two pits down to 97, 98 inches. Uh, with the slowest infiltration rate being 10 inches per hour. Any water in the bioretention system and or the level spreader is just going to fully infiltrate. I mean, it would have to rain greater than 10 inches per hour intensity for an hour where this system might overflow a little bit. We don't get storms like that. You may get an intensity of three inches per hour and it rains that way for 20 minutes but the soils have three times that infiltrative capacity. So both of these systems will easily fully infiltrate the water. Um, uh, they also had, Ray Pierce had a comment on the 6% parking grade. That is a standard grade for the, what we call a door swing. Grades steeper than 6% are uh, hazardous because the door can either pull out of your hand or if you're opening it up facing uphill, the door, uh, especially an SUV door, which is much heavier than a car door, can actually close back on you. So 6% is the maximum grade. They had a question regarding ADA compliance. Well, there are no ADA units here, uh, but it's also important to point out that an ADA ramp, if you had one, is a one to 12 pitch. That's 8.3%, which is two percentage points higher than the grade of our parking lot. So the parking lot itself, if somebody is in a wheelchair, is below ADA, uh, compliance for what would effectively be a ramp as far as that goes. Um, uh, they had some comments which are more relative to construction, uh, such as 
uh, uncovering the invert of the sewer lateral that goes into the building at this point before we extend the line to the south. And that is fine. Um, we, we're happy to work with the public utilities uh, office at that point. Uh, similarly, for the gas line that comes into the site, we're just going to be extending that. Um, those are construction issues and will be uh, addressed with individual permits um, to do that work. Um, in the health department memo, um, uh, they are requesting a phase one or greater uh, environmental assessment because of past issues of some lead that was remediated around this house. Um, there is no need for a phase one. We are not gonna do a phase one is the short answer there. Um, again, I talked about the dumpster area. It's, it, it, we have plenty of room here. And if you wanna make it 10 by 12, then we are eliminating the screening uh, to the adjacent owner, which is consisting of arborvitaes there to give her a, a, a denser wall of vegetation um, as far as that goes. Um, and those are really the only changes we made. I think we've addressed all of the technical comments from Ray Pierce and um, I am gonna be sending Beth uh, hard copies of the plans, but everything was uh, submitted earlier today. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh at this point, the applicant really has nothing further to present and would be happy to answer any questions or look forward to closing the public hearing. Thanks. Okay, Pat, may I just, um, the commission had asked me a couple of things to look into prior to um, continuing tonight. One was, um, Kitty, you had asked in regards to handicapped parking spaces mm -hmm. to check with the building official. Um, the short answer is no, a handicapped parking space isn't required. It's pretty involved and technical as far as the um, codes that are used to do that and the type of housing that it involves. Um, the second thing is um, the health department memo in regards to dumpsters. Excuse me. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't know whose house that was. <laughs> no. See, I say excuse me to him, just like I say it to all the rest of you. We can hear you, Chuck. Um, anyways, I apologize. I, I don't want to make a big issue out of it, King, but um, you have to understand that usually when the Planning and Zoning Commission makes an approval, attached to that approval or decision is um, you have to conform to the health department's report of such and such a day. We are running into this issue now um, with dumpsters. Granted, we do not have a regulation pertaining to dumpsters, but we take their recommendations and we incorporate them in any decision that we make. My suggestion to you is if, uh, you know, you, if whatever the, this commission happens to decide, if it's a favorable approval, the attachment is going to be the health department memo. And in, resp in respect to that, you don't want to hold up anything pertaining to building permits or COs because I do see that happening with another application very shortly. Um, my suggestion would be is to do what they say as far as the dumpster location, make arrangements with the adjoining property owner and put the arborvitaes on their property mm -hmm. and then put it to bed. Um, she may not want them on her property, but I'm Steve. Before, we're happy to put it there. But my point is this, there is the health department does not have a standard for a dumpster. It, they're saying they have talked to industry people. They have not provided any evidence in any other application what the industry standards are. And having designed many 8-3G in Fairfield and New Haven counties, the dumpster is a function of the number of units. The pad size is a function of the number of units and the expected occupancy. For 11 units here, it's one small dumpster, the same size that we have already and one recycling bin easily fit on the site. If, as I said before, if you insist on the 10 by 12, fine, the screening goes away. Again, that's, it is not me plan. insisting on a 10 by 12. Yes, it, is she is. The stand, it is not me. It is the health department who is making this recommendation. The health department is the one that's responsible for doing enforcements, dealing with garbage, dealing with health and safety issues pertaining to garbage, rats, inspections, and all those things. Um, she has been consistent with her uh, recommendations, whether it be an 830G or a site plan or someone putting an addition on the side of a commercial building 
or an industrial building. And I see that it's rising to the level now where it could cause problems. And all I'm saying is I do not want to see a dumpster pad and location have a negative effect on any possible development on this property. And I was making a recommendation. If, if, I can, if I can join in, uh, uh, you're both right. I mean, Steve's correct. There's no health department uh, jurisdiction on dumpster pads to begin with, but it's not worth spending too much more time. To I agree. Second. Yeah, but ultimately, I, I don't want the commission to think that the health department makes this decision. It's whatever the commission decides. If they make the decision on the size of the dumpster uh, pad, and that's it, and, and we, we abide by it. So it's a com completely a decision for the commission. We, and I will go anyway. It's not an issue. Can I, can I say something, uh, Beth? Yes, Just of course. To, of course. It, 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 it's important to note that we always incorporate all of the department's um, memos in, into an approval. So going with what we've always done, we would incorporate her memo into an, an approval if that's what the commission wanted. And it is what it is. The health department's asked as a department to give their opinion and their report, and we would incorporate it. So all Beth is saying, if you wanna make this easier, just just work with the health department and make sure everybody's agreed upon because if we do an approval it would be based on all of the memos from all of the departments that are involved that's all it's that simple that's correct I, and Thank i agree you, John. it's your choice i agree well and that's what the commission's going to do so so it's easier to do it that way and, yep. and 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 work it out that way no, you're right, John, because with Laura, it's parity across the board with Laura. Every application is treated exactly the same with the requirements. At every time. Every time. I never liked our providers that much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the deer will narrow them right down. They'll fit in, fit in the six inch path. Um, as you. far as far as the rest of the comments and, and such that are made by other various uh, departments, I believe that most of them can be addressed um, after any kind of decision, uh, after the close of a public hearing, if more technical expertise is needed from uh, the town engineer or people of that nature, we can certainly do it at that time. Uh, Beth, there was another thing in the health department memo about this phase one environmental assessment failure to identify lead containing soils. What happened to the public? Oh, we're not this is another the, thing that she's asking for. The Pat, um, there, there was phase one and phase two done in 2003 where they remediated soil around under the drip line of the building where the lead was found. That was done 17 years ago. I know she acknowledged that, but she's asking for it again. But there, uh, but the area you're, you're going to be excavating now is a new area. And that's the point of this whole process is that they don't know what's under that area. If some of that could be there as well. Uh, it is not, not to... near the source of the contamination and having dug the test pits on the site, nothing unusual was found. It was pure native sands with no discoloration of any kind. It is not near the house where the lead was found. Just because you're working on the site, that, that's a stretch of it. It was found in the drip line of the house and that's what was remediated. And there is no requirement to do this. This, you know, this house was bought. If the lender did not require a phase one, there is no legal requirement to do so. Again, that is an issue um, that I've seen arise with the health department with a lot of our older homes that are being developed. But in this instance, you did have a phase one and you had remediation occur and because there was lead found on the property. Well, why was there lead found on the, under the drip line from the house? More than likely, it was due to the lead paint that was used to paint the exterior of the Absolutely. house 200 years ago. Um, I would defer, again, I am deferring to the health department. Um, I do believe that they should, everyone should look more, scrutinize more what was done with the phase one and phase two, see what is being proposed by the applicant as far as excavation and areas that are concerned. Um, there isn't a lot of activity taken around, taking place around the house itself. And I do believe she has been consistently asking for this for any older home 
within the town because it is something that has come to rise. I mean, Tim Worcester Street is doing it. There's a, a lot of other places that are doing it, but I do believe in this instance, it was taken care of. But that's an argument for them. Yep. Uh, you know, that's between the health department and the applicant. That is beyond my expertise. And has, has uh, Wright and Pierce received all of um, Mr. Trinkus's latest comments on their memo of 3-3? Uh, Steve responded. I didn't hear that, Kitty. I didn't hear the whole comment. I think, he, I think Steve responded this morning to Wright Pierce. Uh, yes, I yeah, that, that, and did that respond back to you? Yeah, all of their them. comments were addressed, Kitty, in the March 9th memo, which I submitted to Beth earlier today, that. this morning. Yeah, we have I that. read it. And, uh, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, from now on in, I, I very carefully went over both memos for the half of the day. Uh, next time when we do this, could, could we address issues by number? Because I'm going here, Steve, trying to keep up with what you're talking about. And it would have been much easier for me because I'm not an engineer, to, well, and just, just for future. Uh, and yeah, it's my it, mistake, actually, that's not changed. My numbering mirrors Wright Pierce's. So yes, if you look yes, at does. Wright Pierce comment number 19, you'll see my comment 19 that's yeah. applicable to their comment. No, but so, my point right, was, right. as you were talking about them, it would have been oh, easier okay. for me. I, if I could do that in the future. Uh, but no, and I, I should I should have said something. It's my fault. But I just want to make sure that Wright Pierce is happy with every comment you made on their. I would say, minor clarification. I would, excuse me. I would say that um, I reviewed both memos. Yeah. And that um, if there are any comments that truly need to be addressed, uh, that are major, I did not feel there were any. Okay. And uh, they could be handled if you choose to close the public hearing this evening between the two parties. Including the health department? Do you think that could Health department, no. Health department, think, it yeah, is up to the applicant at this point. In, in regards to the dumpster pad, I'm happy to uh, use her recommendation. I will work with Anne regarding screening. Um, even though if we plant on her property, it's on the driveway, I can talk to her about how we can reasonably do that. I'm happy to work with the neighbor in, in doing that, and I'm happy to um appease the health department regarding the dumpster pad as in regards to the phase one i think that's a whole different discussion it's already been done it was done by an environmentalist it was mitigated we're not only not disturbing around the original antique of the house we're working above grade in a completely opposite direction where everything is gonna you know it's it's much higher there's no structure there it seems like it's something that i will i will you know choose to deal with with her um, I, I, I agree with Beth, it's been done, it's been mitigated. It was done years ago. Um, the house has been repainted from the previous owners. Um, so I, I don't see any reason to do it. It seems like overkill and a waste of time and resources. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm in a car. <laughs> I know my That's screen. Right. That's fine. Lacrosse practice, you know how it goes. <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> So Beth, just a quick question then. If we have to go back to uh, Laura, uh, can we close the hearing or do we have to wait until she responds? Well, first of all, you have a response from Laura. You right. have a response from the applicant. Right. Mm -hmm. But you just said so. Yeah. Uh, you have a response now from the property owner. Right. My, my biggest concern was, right. again, it wasn't chastising the applicant. It was, no, I'm, going oh, through no, I an issue. Oh, no. I'm going through an issue now that I know someone is not going to get a CO because mm -hmm. the dumpster pad isn't correct. And I know that we went through the same thing about the dumpster pad being correct with the police department, mm -hmm. that until they made the change, they did not get a CO. So, right. I mean, you're talking about, I don't want to hear anything except we're talking about being fair and consistent oh, no. with all site plans. And I'm just trying to put out a fire before it starts. Exactly. We appreciate it. Perfect. All right. As, as this is a continuation of a public hearing, we'll now reach out to the public. Uh, David, if you'd be kind enough to let the public know how they can ask a question. Sure. I'll be brief as I can. Uh, for those that have done Zoom before, it's the same procedure. For those that are new, uh, you would click on the uh, participants icon at the bottom uh, taskbar of the Zoom app. 
Uh, there's a list of names that appears on the right hand side of the screen. You would click next to your name, a blue button that says raise hand that lets us know that you have public comment that you would like to offer uh, for this application. Um, Pat, I'm not seeing anyone that seems to have any. Um, if you'd like to wait another few seconds, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, that's fine. We can just wait a, a second or so. And... All right, then we're going to move to commission members. Um, Kitty, do you have any additional questions? No, I'm done for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. John. I am all set, and I believe that it's okay to close the public hearing as long as everybody's on the same page as far as the health department's memo. All right. Penny. No questions. Ken. Uh, just two comments. Uh, if the Arborvitis can't work, is there any reason why some kind of stockade vents couldn't be put up? Her concern is um, her view from her residence to the new new proposed building and in that case you know even an eight foot partially open fence wouldn't work i think she wants something just to soften the corner there are actually a couple of arborvitaes planted there sort of in that similar area um but it, it, again it's something i'll work with her on um but i do think she wants more height than a fence okay yeah uh this question is more for uh the engineer what is involved with the phase one and how, how expensive is a phase one study? A phase one generally is a review of um, local records, i.e. from the health department in the most case, DEP files, if there was a spill as an example. Um, and it's a compilation of, I guess a literature review for lack of a better term about potential issues with the site. Um, years ago, they were around 1500 um, A client of mine just got one about a month ago. It was $3,500 for phase one. Now, phase ones typically identify potential issues. The phase two is more involved where it becomes the testing and remediation, but that was done in 03. So the site has already had both a phase one and phase two. Okay, great. Thank you. I mean, the phase two costs it really depends on what the phase one kind of shows. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think this test that was done before is fine. I was just curious. Yeah. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, Rob. I am good to go, thank you. Oh, Rob, you may want to adjust your volume. We can barely hear you. I know what you said though. <clears throat> that darn microphone thing again, okay. Um, Linda. No questions, thank you. And Rob Wallace. Did he answer? Uh, Rob may have disconnected again. It looks like he disappeared. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so are, are we in consensus that we can close this hearing tonight? And I'll just ask by individual. Uh, Kitty? Yes. John? I believe we could close it, but I do want to add something. I agree with the applicant about the phase one study, but we as a commission need to be consistent and we, we send it out to department heads for the review. So mm -hmm. being consistent is taking their recommendations after we ask for their memos. So um, I think they need to take their argument to the health department and, and just say it again. We did a phase one, we did remediation. It was all about the original building and this is what we're doing now. That's all. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, Ken. Yes, we can go ahead. Uh, Rob Stoll. We're good. Linda? Yes, in favor. Okay, and I'm in favor. So this public hearing is closed. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, guys. Good. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, next on our agenda is a new public hearing, Infinity Enterprises LLC Site Plan Special Permit 25 Francis J. Clark Circle. Yeah. You want and me to public notice? speaking to this one, Ron Wolf is here this evening. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have a legal notice to read for this one. Okay, to be posted from February 26, 2021, to March 9, 
2021 public notice. The Bethel P Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on March 9th, 2021 at 7 p.m. using the virtual platform Zoom to hear the application of Infinity Enterprises LLC for a property located at 25 FJ Clark Park Circle for a special permit to construct an additional industrial building with associated amenities. This property can be found in the tax assessor's office as map 10, lot 23, and lot 150-14. The public may send comments via regular mail and email at use at Bethel, Connecticut, CT, Gov. Comments must be received by March 8th by 4 p.m. in order to be included in the hearing. Pat West Schumer. Thank you. Welcome. And I'm sorry, who is speaking to this application? We start with Ron. Ron, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Ron Wolf, uh, professional engineer uh, with Wolf Engineering, located in Woodbury, and representing Kevin. the owner and applicant. Thank you. And Kevin? Uh, yes, uh, Kevin Bennett, Bennett Sullivan Associates, Architects and Planners, uh, Southbury, uh, representing the owner. Jen, you want to go? And I'm I'm Jennifer Duckworth, Architect, Bennett Sullivan Associates representing the owner. Thank you. Okay, Pat, that's it. All right, um, who is presenting this application? Who will talk to this? To the I would like to begin if, if that's okay. Uh, yes, if absolutely. Give me permission to share my screen. Uh, screen sharing is enabled, Mr. Wolf. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, is my screen visible uh, to everyone? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is the property. Uh, it's located on the um, southwest corner of Francis Clark Circle, which you see here going uh, up and down on the screen and uh, Trowbridge Drive going um, south, um, located to the um, easterly side of the property. There's an existing building uh, situated on the property. Uh, as you can see, sorry about that. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, there's an existing building uh, situated on the property. Um, that existing building is about 8,900 square feet. Uh, on this photo, uh, it doesn't appear on this photo, but there's also a new parking area that was uh, permitted and constructed last summer um, that is in this uh, area here. I can show you um, a different um, image. Well, it's not there either, but um, I can show that to you uh, a little bit later on. Um, the property has an area of about 2.03 acres and it's located in the uh, IP zoning district. Um, let's see, back to the uh, existing conditions map. Um, in addition to the existing building, there's an existing uh, upper uh, by Duminous parking area that you could see here. Um, the remainder of the site uh, is primarily wooded. Um, there's a pretty tall um, knoll, uh, as you can see, where the contours um, create a circle here. Um, and then the property slopes down to the west, where there's a wetland area that kind of runs along the westerly property line and then traverses off onto uh, this larger parcel, which is actually owned by the town of Bethel. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna go to another drawing here. Um, this is the proposed site plan overlaid on uh, that same uh, aerial image um, that shows a proposed building uh, that measures 175 feet long um, and 75 feet wide uh, with a loading dock. Um, located on the west end of the proposed building. Uh, there are 33 parking spaces proposed, uh, as well as a, a loading dock um, and a truck maneuvering area that we, we created so that a truck could um, enter into the site, um, turn to the right, and then back into the loading dock, as you see here. Um, the existing parking area, some of it lies underneath the proposed parking area that, um, and some of it lies uh, to the north. Um, the intent would be for that to be removed and um, seeded, with, uh, seeded with grass. 
we have, um, turn to site plan now. This is the site plan um, for the property. Uh, we have some street trees proposed along the front of the building. Uh, also some trees, some trees on the north side of the proposed parking area, as well as um, some planted islands. There are three planted islands. The proposed building uh, would be served by public water and sewer. Um, as far as the drainage is concerned, um, we were connecting the runoff from the proposed uh, parking area and the proposed building uh, to an existing drainage system that was installed when the uh, site was developed and when the lower building was, uh, was constructed. We have um, two retaining walls proposed, one that um, runs in an east-west direction and wraps around the back and the um, side of the building uh, that's one retaining wall, as you can see here. And then we have uh, another retaining wall um, that supports the truck maneuvering area and the loading dock um, on, the, on the west side of the property, uh, as you can see uh, that I'm outlining, outlining with my mouse uh, there. Uh, let's see. We just received some comments uh, from the health department uh, requesting that we show uh, a proposed dumpster pad location, which we will do. And also received from some comments from the uh, public utilities department also, which we will address uh, primarily concerning the um, proposed water and sewer connections to the building. Uh, let's see. If I could, Ron. Sure. For a sec. Uh, our thoughts were because we had the service area that our dumpster would be located uh, in the service area, which would be uh, just above where you show the, uh, the truck back in there. Yeah, we, we will work that out um, with uh, with the health department and at least show a dumpster location on the plan that works for the for the owner and applicant. Uh, let's see. Um, also, as a result, the site work uh, results in about 3,700 cubic yards of surplus uh, material to be removed from the site, uh, which we um, indicated on the application. Um, and at that point, I can answer any questions that commission may have. Uh, Beth, did you want to add anything before we reach out to the public? Yeah. In regard, yes, in regard to the application, um, we do not have final comments from Wright Pierce in regards to um, uh, what they would normally review. So obviously this hearing will have to be continued. Um, you do have some comments from the fire marshal, but those really to wanting to uh, set a separate address for this for fire emergency. Right. Um, I would like also like to just say that I would like to see um, a little bit more landscaping uh, at the entryway. Um, it is a corner lot. And when they did do the paving um, on the first building, they did have to take away some trees that were not in very good shape there. I would like the applicant to consider to enhance the opening over here a little bit more with plantings on both sides of the driveway entrance. That's not a problem. And could you just um, tell me what the cuts and fills are again? I can't read my screen. <laughs> we have a surplus of 3,700 cubic yards, uh, Beth. The table that's on the plan was a table that was generated um, for the volumes within the uh, wetland uh, regulated areas. Okay. Okay. But the surplus material is uh, 3,700 cubic yards. Okay, thank you. So some, of, some of it is going to be utilized on the site? Oh, uh, that includes the amount that uh, is to be utilized. Uh, that that's the net amount. That has to be removed. Right, that's the removed. Right, gotcha. All right. As this is a public hearing, we will reach out to the public. Uh, David, if you see any hands up, if you would please let them in. Uh, I'm not seeing any hands raised for public comment. One last thing I might add, I believe if you're participating in this meeting by phone, it's star nine to let us know you're raising your hand. But apart from that, Pat, 
no raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you, David. Um, I have no questions. Um, Kitty. I, I don't see anything. I didn't see the health department memo, but they've addressed that they will work with the uh, health department. So for right now, I have nothing. You're muted, Pat. John. Uh, the only question I have before we get all of the other information, obviously it's gonna be a continuation of a public hearing, is to Tommy Galford's um, comment about a separate address. Um, yeah. Beth, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but in that zone up there, that industrial zone, don't we have to maintain two acre parcels for them to be a conforming lot? And if we change mm -hmm. or created a new address, wouldn't that make two non-conforming lots in that zone? Yes, uh, you're correct. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about the fire department knowing where to go, um, but I'm not sure that 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 warrants putting two you two lots in non-conforming. That, that's I, all. I just I just want the commission to think about that moving forward. It's a good thought. Thank you, John. Uh, Penny. We could we could address them as uh, building A and building B if uh, that. Yeah. Was... That's, 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 I think I think the best way to address that is. Um, We'll talk about putting some markings or monuments out there or markings on the building itself um, to help the fire department identify which building. That's all I have right now, Pat. Thank you. It keeps muting me. Um, Penny. It's not, a bad, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. People behave. Um, no questions. Thank you, Penny. Kenny. Um, could you tell us what you're going to do inside the building? Oh, let me close that. At this point in time, uh, Kevin Bennett, uh, Bennett Sullivan, the, um, the owner is using it as a uh, uh, spec um, warehouse or office or, <clears throat> um, you know, a shop area. It's very similar to what he's done with the existing building that he bought, uh, I think about a year and a half ago. And uh, he's cleaned that up. Uh, we did uh, um, a fit up for a company uh, to move in, which they have offices in. <clears throat> There's, uh, you know, shops, uh, different things of that nature. It's, it's a flex space. Right. It's good to see. Yeah. He's had interest in it, so. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Rob Stoll. Uh, uh, the only real question I have is the site that's going to be cleared. Are there going to be any blasting issues we need to be concerned about? Uh, blasting, if it's required, which it may be, um, they would just have to follow the normal protocol and obtain their permits uh, with the with the fire marshal in town. Um, we don't know exactly what we have in there quite yet. It may be. Uh, you know, rock and dirt that can be dug with a larger excavation yep. or, um, you know, a ripper. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda. Excuse Nothing me. at this time. Thank you. Um, is Rob Wallace back with us or no? I am, yes, and I oh. apologize. My audio kept cutting out, so I kept having to rejoin the, the meeting. Um, you have any comments, Rob, questions? No, not, um, not really. Um, my only thing is, you know, that back retaining wall, I mean, there's a lot of slope there has uh, runoff from the mountain been considered in the drainage, uh, drainage plan. As far as the runoff, um, we were connecting into the existing drainage system um, that was that was put in place when the site was originally developed. And we're uh, on the backside of this retaining wall here, we're essentially grading the site down towards the retaining wall so we're not shedding water on the property to the south so um there's a high point on the on the back side of the retaining wall um so the runoff will run in this direction um and then uh, a small portion of the runoff will come around this direction and then get picked up by this catch basin in the parking lot here the high point is basically right on the corner of the wall um, so nothing will flow onto the uh, adjoining property to the south. 
Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Beth, when is our next meeting? March 23rd. Yeah. All right. So this will be continued to March 23rd. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on, next on our agenda. Uh, business, business meeting minutes. Oh. Has everyone had a chance to read the meeting minutes of February 23rd, if I may have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting. The well, meeting. Kitty, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to back up. Oh, sure. I'm going to uh, seat Rob Stoll mm -hmm. and for uh, Bob Legnard and Linda for Rich Tibbetts. Okay, Kitty, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of February 23rd, 2021. Second. Thank you, Penny. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstention? Motion carries. Moving on, we have no work sessions. Yay. Uh, planning and zoning official report, Nine Good Hill Road. Okay, David, could you bring up the folder that says planner's report? Sure. Let me just uh, grab it here one second. If my computer will cooperate. If you can tell me where to find it, I'll do it. <laughs> I would be happy to do that if I could get my screen to work. In the drive. The drive is right there, but I don't know how to put it on the Zoom. Okay. Uh, so, Beth, what you would do is uh, you would use... So, if you have uh, the plans in front of you from the Google Drive, you would just use the share screen button at the bottom of Zoom. And then you would click on which program you want to show, which would be Chrome. You're going too fast. Sorry. I'll, I'll repeat again. So, you, right. so, you so I'm would, going to the drive, right? Right, you go to the drive. Now, can you see me doing this? No, but okay. I have a good idea of what you're doing. Okay, so I go to the drive. So I'm going to go to the Google Drive. Yep. My computer is so slow, I apologize. Yeah, mine's doing the same thing, Beth. I don't know what's going on. I think on. it's the internet, I really do. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the 3-9 meeting. Yep. And... Nancy's rolling her eyes right now. I know, and I can only hear you, you know? I can only see what, I can only imagine what you're doing, John. <laughs> doing bad. Okay, planners report. Right, good and, right, and then at the bottom, and then in Zoom, you're gonna click the green button to share screen. So I'm gonna bring up Nine Good Hill Road, and yep. then I'm going back to Zoom, and I'm gonna hit share screen. Share screen, and then you're gonna click on the Nine Good Hill uh, box that comes up. There you go. Wow. Uh, right? You got it. That's pretty cool. David, you're the Zen master. <laughs> well, you know, I. Yeah, but you got to make your screen bigger because I can't even see it. Yep. You got it, Beth. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Nine Good Hill Road. We really. Whoops. No, I see. I, I did that. I messed it up. Because you hit the back arrow. Thank uh, you. Now, how do I move this? I gotta go like that. Okay. Yep. All right. So, um, in regards to Nine Good Hill Road, the main point, um, the only point that we want to clarify this evening is that we received plan week. It's a revised drawing. It shows um, the engineer drawings as far as th uh, two, three unit complexes behind Good Hill Road. Um, we have referred it to the Wright Pierce for their comments. I should have comments from them at our next meeting. Also in the meantime, uh, there was some, there is some discussion going on between uh, the owner of the property in front of Mr. Draper's development and I would say that they have been positive in nature. But all I want you guys to know is that the plans are here. Take a look at them. We will have the applicant, uh, the, uh, the applicant, the property owner here at the next meeting to discuss them further 
and I ask you to refrain from any comments at this point. Okay. okay? So just acknowledge that you you have received these plans for review. Yes, we did. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, David, I'm going to go from Nine Good Hill Road. The next item <clears throat> that I want to go to is. You're killing me, making me do this on my own. I am sorry, Beth. I am. I'm no, just okay. getting I'm... into my Google account now. <laughs> I'll get there. Okay. So the next item I want to go to is. 279 Greenwood Avenue. Yep. 279 Greenwood Avenue is the Hub Shopping Center. Yes. Okay. Yep. The Hub Shopping Center has been working with me and Alyssa to make some improvements to the property pertaining to the facade. Can you guys see all that? We yeah. cannot, Beth. No, we can't oh. see it yet. Oh, I didn't share my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, Zen Master, help her out. Um, I'm doing what I can. <laughs> I apologize. I've, I've been leading services and teaching in school for a year now, yeah. and I'm still messing this thing up. <laughs> so. I'm getting better okay. because of David. He's a great teacher. Oh, but my gosh. But I my age had to do in this. It's a, it's a killer. <laughs> it is. All right, so everybody sees this is the new and improved facade pertaining to the Hub Shopping Center. Disregard where the right hand corner that says TDB Emporium. Mm -hmm. We do not have a name for a possible tenant there yet, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that we will have a tenant there shortly. Oh, Alyssa okay. has, I'm hoping that we will have a tenant shortly. Alyssa has been working with their architect. It's a difficult shopping center to work with. It's a strip mall. It had these funky old fake pair of pets on there from 40, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. the last time they redid this. This is a very cl much cleaner look. Um, uh, you know, I like the white painted bricks, the black steel facing, things of that nature. Also, the final thing that we're trying to work with, if you look to the left where West Side Deli is, they're gonna be doing a little outdoor eating area there. Yeah, that's nice. The West Side. And we're also finalizing and working on a possible outdoor eating area for oh. Asian kids on the oh, other oh, side. Very nice. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Beth. I'm sorry. The eating area, where, what was that for? Down, down, down below. West Side Deli over here. Yep. Yeah. They're going to do a little outdoor eating area there. Yeah. And then um, Asia Kitchen. We're hoping to work something out for Asian Kitchen. Can you see my little cursor here? Yes. Where it says Chinese and the transformer is? Yeah. We're trying so, to work yeah. something out for them. Okay. Yes. Beth, I have a question. Yes. Um, this shows right now the hub includes People's Bank. Do we have any sense of what's going to happen now that M and T has acquired peoples and they're going to be closing branches. I don't know because we do have the bank that you just mentioned right next to English. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I don't I haven't so, heard from them in regards to this. Okay. Hmm. So I'm looking, you know, what do you guys think? Do you, I mean I like it. I like it. We've really been working hard on this for a while. Mm -hmm. it's really Beth, great. remember remember a few years back they talked about possibly putting up buildings across the parking lot yes side have uh they talked about that at all um in very briefly in a planning sort of way but no um indication of okay. it happening okay. anytime soon okay thank you because when something like that happens like i've explained to them um, if they are ever thinking of doing another pad or something, we're going to start looking at lighting. We're going to start looking at the islands right. and getting some cha changing out that lighting, changing out those islands to get them more enhanced with landscaping and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. 
because it's a difficult site. It's hard to work with it to make it more in conformance. You can't really make it in conformance with the TOD in the village district, but to you know make it look very, very clean is a great step. Oh, that's very nice. Good. Is there any anybody have any other questions they want to ask about this? Okay. All right. So we're good with that. Okay. okay. Beth, I am in Google Drive, so I will bring up uh, the house build. Do you want to go into that next? No, let's go into um, uh, uh, food bag. Okay. Got it. Oh, I missed that. Food bag. I missed that. I don't know. I'll have food bag. It's 70 something, Greenwood Avenue. 79. Okay. Okay. This up, everybody? Yeah. Coming. Okay. Coming. This, um, we just, uh, just until it gets up here, we've received um, a request for some, let's go to the facade. Our request for some facade, stop, yeah, for some facade changes. Uh, it's changing over to what is called Atlantis Food Market or Fresh Market, something along those lines. Uh, we just received this. I have Alyssa looking at it and go up a little bit more, David. Yeah, let's leave it there. Excuse me. Let's leave it there for now. Um, uh, we haven't started the review yet. Uh, we pulled up the old site plan. I pulled up the old site plan, trying to find what the original called for. Um, you know, looked obviously the first thing I look at is the canopy, and there's no way to do anything with that. Um, but we do want to see some improvement to the building outside of the steel, the steel that they're proposing. Um, and we really wanna make it look good because you gotta remember, look at what happened to the opposite corner. You have Bethel Food Market on one corner. You got Jeff Bruno's apartment on the other. Oh. This is the other, you know, this is a, 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 the other premier corner to Bethel. Um, we're very, very limited on what can be done landscaping wise. But the building itself, I, I just want you guys to think about it. If anything, if you, if, if you have any ideas or any comments, like off the cuff, please. Are they adding if, to the building here? Excuse me? Are they making the building larger? No. Oh, it just, it looks different, so much different. Scroll, scroll down, David, to, to the bigger picture of the, of the facade. I mean, so what are they just changing the siding and that's, they're looking for a different look, Beth? I mean, I don't see much change. The doors, the windows are identical. It looks like they're just getting away from that red brick coming some, with some vertical siding. Is that right? What? And that's basically it. Oh, that's what it is. So it's not going to be sick. They're covering now. most of the brick. And okay, so, but, but getting a, the architectural review or, or just a look at it, I mean, you know, what is your knee jerk reaction to making that look, that square building look different, you know? Um, I think that there's possibly, you know, what we're looking to, it, it's, it's so difficult with this canopy, John. That's right. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. The canopy, you know, the canopy overhangs the roof of the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you can't really, you can't put gable, you can't do too much with it at all. Right. Um, are, they, are, they, are they losing gas pumps? No, no. Oh, because I only see four. I know, but that doesn't that part doesn't matter, Kit. Oh, okay. It's the I building didn't... that we're talking about, the facade. Yeah. Beth, can we have uh kind of let Alyssa go wild here and see what she comes up with? <laughs> well, she <laughs> she is going wild. She's been waiting for this. <laughs> she didn't think she'd be seeing this, but you know, I really. We, we have to figure out a way to at least soften it. Yeah. I feel that's the phrase I wish. Well, my, reaction is, my reaction is getting rid of the brick almost, you know, gets it further away from looking in the character of that intersection, you know, going with that. I can just imagine it being a white vertical siding that doesn't look like anything across the street now. At least the brick was New England, you know? Do, do we have colors or anything yet? 
I, you know, I was looking, there's the mechanicals on the top and things like that. Um, I was even thinking along the lines of painting the brick, you know, doing a whitewash on the brick or something. I, you know, I just don't know. What about putting clapboards there? Yeah, yeah that sits Why right not? on the corner of the historic district. You know, some kind of clapboard siding. Something along those lines. Yeah. Gotta go, gotta go with something like that. I, I just <laughs> I, I just can't. It looks more industrial. It, it's it's a very stark look to me. Right. Very stark. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to beat them up. I uh, talk to them about the corner <clears throat> landscaping there. They've got to they've got to do something there. Um, the other side where the fence is, there's a little place in the back. But I mean, they have this whole thing is paved, solid pavement. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to share my woes with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think it, look, it looks like a storage container. <laughs> that's that's you're right. <laughs> that's a good yeah. point. Rob. That's but a good point. But apparently, it's changed hands. Um, someone out of New York has purchased it, and um, so we'll see what we come up with. And please, any ideas? Let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. Is, is okay. this going to be a work in process where you're going to bring it in front of the commission as this project? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I haven't talked to the applicant yet because I want to get Alyssa going on this and then I'm going to let them know they're out of Brooklyn or something like that. And I'm just going to say, okay, this is the process. This is what you have to do because they did apply for a permit, a zoning permit. They thought they were going to come in and just get a zoning permit. Right. So, so oh. what got them? What got them into your office is they're giving it a new look because they're changing the name, and they mm -hmm. thought they were just going to do it. But there's a process. So if they inevitably want to change the look, they've got to work with the town. Correct. Right. So, okay. So, so, so it's good for us that there's a new owner and they want to clean it up. They just don't know the process, and now it's going to be a negotiation. Correct. Yeah. Great. Well, at least it's a bite yeah. at the apple. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know what? Be thankful for TOD. Absolutely. Yes. Because if we didn't have TOD, we wouldn't have had Alyssa working with the hub. Right. We right. wouldn't have Alyssa being able to work with these guys. Good. And Beth, I don't know if you heard me, but this literally sits on the corner of the historic district. Yes, I did. And I'll make that okay. point to them when they call to um, discuss it further. Okay. So, so Beth, not to not to just stay on this all night, but the 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 mm -hmm. awning or or the canopy, you know, that just appeared one night, and that was well before I was even. Oh on the God, I remember it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. tell me about the process on how that got approved, and it just it just appeared. That inbounds to try to soften that up. It didn't get approved. It just appeared. I was here. Well, okay, well, okay. is that right, Beth? It, it never got approved. I went, what I did was because I wasn't here either and I've only heard the rumors and the stories that it just appeared one night. Right, yep. But, but what I um, did was I did go through the building file today. That was the first thing I looked for. And it, there was a building per, permit pulled for this in 1994 or something like that. And it did receive a CO. Okay, well, then, then, then it's legit, okay. It exists, there's nothing no, you can do about it. I'm sorry. I said it does exist, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, absolutely, in my opinion. I remember. <laughs> but I don't know how it appeared. How how does something like that appear? What Did it go through P and Z at all? No. Okay. No. No, because it was my first year on P and Z, and we went. Where, where did that come from? One weekend, all of a sudden, it was there, and that was really it. <laughs> okay. It was like Kitty was sleeping at the wheel. I was saying that the way up. Okay. I was in Newbieville. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. I'll keep you informed. Excellent. Looking you. forward to it. Uh, next is the um, next is House Bill. This is a House Bill 804. It is in going um, to the uh, legislator legislation. Oh yeah. Uh, you know what I mean. The House. Right. It is a bill that uh, was put forth by the Housing Committee. Um, very interesting when they had the public hearings on the bill, I attended the public hearings and it, I would say that there is 
nothing in this document that was truly explained or discussed during the public hearing process. They are not having another hearing on this. They're both sending it straight to the house. Um, what this what this basically does is throw zoning out the window. Yep. It throws out, if you look at it carefully, it throws out everything that you have accomplished over the last 15 to 20 years, pertaining mm -hmm. to the TOD regulations, your oh, yeah. TOD zone, your double R10 zone, your RMO zone, your commercial zone, all your zones where you allow the opportunity to have multi-housing. It is demanding that you'll see just by looking at it, it's a demand that um, you can have four dwelling units in anything, anywhere. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. It is not, it's of brutal. It. It's brutal. And it oh. also is saying that um, Planning and Zoning Commission members every year should receive four hours of education on affordable housing. Now, I have had uh, numerous conversations with other state representatives and state senators and have explained to them that they are the ones that need to have the four hours of education. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I guess Kenny's leaving the room on that one. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the, it's very controversial. Um, I know the intent was good to try to come up with ways to um, help affordable housing, but and to um, but it, this is just not the answer. But Beth, we can't be the only town that encourages affordable housing. So no, it's like we're being penalized, even though we know that we need affordable housing in the town of Bethel. You know, I I, I just don't get how they're that tone deaf that they think they need to write something like this. Well, as my husband said, people who do this need IQ tests. It's it's just very discouraging about uh, with the lack of involvement from the general public, number one. I mean, if you put everything else that's proposed here aside, there the way the public hearing was discussed, it was it was a few sentences, two paragraphs, or whatever you want to say of the bill. It wasn't the in-depth um information that this is providing. It was it was more of a theory or a concept. And now we have this in front of us. It's very important that you all read it. It's important. Um, I'm sure Matt and I will be putting together some press release or public information, um, encouraging people to express their opinions. Good, good. Hey Beth, do you know who proposed the bill? Um, uh, um, Desegregate Connecticut is the name of the organization. That's wow. basically what it's all about. Sounds sounds about right. Sounds about right. I believe that's the name of the organization. Right, right. it is. Yes. And it's 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 so, it mostly for you not to have an opinion that they're right and this is what should be done. And I think some of our state legislators were behind this. Oh gosh, and I can think of. Oh two. yes, they were. Yeah, I know they were. Mostly, oh, yeah. um, mostly from the big cities. Yeah. Parkland, Bridgeport. Um, so anyways, uh, I, I will definitely keep you informed of where this is going. Um, this was just released, I think it was yesterday. When was the public hearing, Beth? Back in February. February oh. 18th, because I know it was on there for like six hours. Oh, it was online? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought you did it after Saturday's conference. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm already pants. <laughs> yeah. You're in rare form tonight, man. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, that's, um, if you, you know, we can talk further about it, um, but I will keep you all informed because this is going to be really important that we, exactly. you know, making that lot of noise about it. Um, and that being said, I, I, the last thing, the, uh, no, the last thing before I want to talk about Saturday and have you guys talk about that a little bit for the ones that missed it. Um, I think we mentioned it at the last meeting, there's been several planning and zoning commission members that have been 
several members of the general public in regards to, um, is it one, two, three Greenwood Avenue, the corner with, with uh, P.G. Barnum Square, the antique place. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. Um, I, in, in discussing with Tom Galliford again, um, it doesn't appear that the um, uh, uh, State Attorney General's office is doing anything at this point. Um, really? And um, so I just want you all to know that uh, I reluctantly, but I have to do it, it's my job, is to start the whole blight ordinance process again. Okay. Um, oh, absolutely. And it will probably right. get to that level of, you know, press, fines, hearings, and things of that nature. But, um, and I do it with reluctance, but I know something has to be done. And you have to understand that we, many, many people have tried to help this party and try to um, work with this party. And it's just not working. So just stay tuned on that. But anyways, on, um, so the, so a few of you attended Saturday's conference. Yes. What'd you think? Some of it was a little yawn. Yeah. And some of it, some oh, of it was very good. Uh, there were a couple people who totally read right from the book that we had. And I thought I could have done that and save 30 minutes of time. But other people like our guys, Peter Olson, Chuck, they had some really good things out there. Chuck did a really good presentation because he spoke to you. He wasn't reading from the book. He actually spoke to you. Right. Uh, but there were a lot of things that started to raise questions, even to me, that I thought, oh, I better go back and read this. That maybe we are doing something not quite the right way. Mm -hmm. No. I, I thought it was very informative. I thought it went very long, like Pat just said, in a few areas. I think that the Zoom brought a whole different audience to it, and that's obviously a benefit to all the boards and commissions in Connecticut. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. 600 and almost yeah, over 600 people. I think it should be cut in, in two different sessions because it's a lot to take. You know, I by that last that's, that's a great that, idea, John. You know, she, she was losing me, you know, and, um, you know, you know, it started off really well with Amy in the beginning, and and I, I thought, thought she was hey, very good. Her slippers, and you know, and 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 you, it was easy to lose focus, you know, a couple of times yeah. because it yeah. was all day. But it was very informative, and you know, I've been here almost twenty years, and oh. and there was times where I was getting lost. You know, there was a lot of information yeah. that was coming yeah. in. Is that fair? That's fair. That's very fair. I think that um, you know what what I found was I. I they started with zoning and subdivision first. Right. And yeah. to me, it that was like, oh God, don't start with the yeah. with the stuff that I do. You know, right. you guys, you participate, and yes, you need to know what the planning does and that, but the dates and the times and this and that and this and you know, all the first cuts yeah. like, that's yeah. the stuff that the staff <laughs> didn't get on for you. And I was I, I, gonna get lost in that and it, before the good stuff came along. Yeah. You know, I, and I don't know about anybody else, but I was really looking forward to uh, a discussion on the affordability. And I found that affordability was really ho-hum and nothing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I didn't like that at all. I learned I'm nothing. Forward to that I, I wish I had walked away. <laughs> uh, the point made is that I wish that, I, that they discussed it more. And yeah. I'm sorry, but they should have had a better inkling that this bill was coming out on Monday or Tuesday this week. And they could have at least mentioned, hey, when you have a minute, go look at this bill. Go look at this, right. Exactly. Yeah, you might be interested in this part of it, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, but it was worthwhile, and I would encourage, it's done every two years, and we will just continue to do it, and I'm going to encourage them to stick with the Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. Now, I they agree. talked about that it was recorded, and then they were going to make it available for everybody that paid slash right an email address and get it to us because right. there's certain areas that i want to you know go back to the the time stamp right and, and listen right. again so and if did you look yeah. at the questions john some of the questions some of the other commissioners asked were very good questions oh, they were so very i good. asked uh, yeah. are we also going to get a list of the questions and the answers and they said yes 
Yeah, we are. I don't know when we're going to get it, but we're going to get it. Yeah, hopefully that transcript comes out because I it'll yeah. be interesting just to be able to just go back to it and, and watch certain you know sections. Exactly. And if I can share, if I can share it with everybody, I'll share it with everybody. Great. Definitely, definitely, because it was very worthwhile. Right. Um, well, so it was definitely. Was the presentation recorded? Yes. 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 So it's I'm available. It'll be available. Yes. Yeah, it will be available. Okay, great. Did we get a, a <clears throat> sort of an email or something about this? Because I mean, I was working hey. anyway, so I wouldn't be able to attend. Oh, you were sick. All ever seeing anything about a meeting. Or yeah, you were. Um, we did. I did send you an email in regards to that. That was a lot. Got a email with the brochure attached. Right. About this, uh, and it was a while ago, though, Rob. But David, I think, said, no, I think it was when Rob was sick. But we got a hard copy flyer as well, the brochure. Yeah. yeah. David sent the, the brochure and the invitation out last week, one last time. Oh, yeah. yeah they that, there were more brochures coming because they didn't have enough. Right. The, the, that was uh, the they're talking about the book, not the brochure. The book, yeah, well, they're talking about, about the book, right. Kitty. The, book. The, the idea with that, Kitty, was so that, and, and John, was that everybody could have an itinerary for how the, oh, uh, right. the meeting was planned out. I, I think if you had wanted to register for that, Beth had mentioned that a few meetings ago because the deadline to get registered for this, I think, was like February 17th. Right. Uh, they, they make this pretty early so that they yeah. can get the 600, 600 people in there right. uh, to begin with. Um, so if, I, I, if the video is available and if I can figure out a way to send it <clears throat> to everybody, I will. Thank you. Because yeah. I also have a copy of the agenda and the time periods and they kept pretty close to the time period. So you should yes, be able to go along. Yeah, 30 minutes. And, um, okay. Also with the book, I did speak to them about putting in electronic format which I know they have. I was talking to oh, what, sure. yeah. Yeah. So if I can get that in electronic format, again, it's a little plagiarizing, but I'll share it with anybody I can. Yeah. Beth, it, we, we would be able to scan that pretty easy. No, we're not scanning that book. That's a, it's a, that's a lot of book. <laughs> that's like a return of record. We're not doing that. I'll give somebody my book. There you go. <laughs> I'll share mine. <laughs> Okay, I'm. Um, I, that's all I have for this evening. I'm losing my voice, so that means it's time to uh, be, <laughs> go to bed. All right. Uh, any commission comments? Yeah. Hearing none. Uh, any public input? BJ. Oh, okay. No, thank you. <laughs> and do we have any other public out there or no? All right. If I may have a motion to adjourn. Happy Thanksgiving and a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Patrick's Day. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.